As an earthling, we're just beginning to move into an eternal spring. Today is our day to be free, that we may roll on the roller coaster of life, saying, Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. Look to your neighbor and say, Good morning. Wherever you are on the planet, look to your neighbor and say, Good morning. It is a good morning because the spiritual sun is always at a 45 degree angle within our own soul because we are luminous beings. We are the light, the light that lights up every being that comes to the planet. Let us take just a second and embrace Dion Miao once again and our wonderful Agape House Band and our wonderful special musicians for bringing the soulful sound, the vibrational frequency of that which is inaudible and that which is invisible bringing it into a manifestation realm that we may have a divine experience of the ineffable, of which is the reason why you come to a spiritual community, a metaphysical community that does its best to bring that which can't be seen, that which can't be heard by the sensorium, the senses, into a way by which we can have a direct encounter by way by which that encounter can be transmuted into sight and sound, behavior, healings, revelations, and the walking on this planet as a true representation of that which is invisible but indivisible, never divided from us. That would be the presence that is never an absence. You heard last week as you tuned in, at the beginning of the beginning of this particular month, our theme has been a, tr a true reset. You've heard our, our very our Reverend Kim stand with Terra Nova, break that down in a very powerful way. A joyful reminder that as the reading indicated from that theme of the month writing, that we are here to have a true reset of mind and of heart. And that is, there is something about us that's authentic, something about us that's real, that's a capital R, real, something about us that's eternal, and that we are here to reset ourselves back to that which has no time, really doesn't have a beginning, for each and every one of us have emerged from this eternal presence. And though we have had a birth, into the earth plain, which brought with us the conundrum of thoughts and emotions and feelings and perceptions and opinions and positionalities and, and points of view that have manifested as a world, manifested as worldly experience, agreements, contentions, loving, etc. And though we may have been imprinted consciously and subconsciously by the milieu of thoughts, opinions, points of view, positionalities, perceptions, etc. Through our spiritual practice, regardless of whether you were driven to your spiritual practice by pain or whether you were pulled to your spiritual practice by an insight or a vision, ultimately, you're here for a true reset to come back to your original self, the perfect spiritual idea that, as the writing indicated, is flawless. It's always a joyful reminder for those who were coming out of traditional religions to be aware that you were not conceived or born in any kind of sin at all. That's in the delusion of the mind that creates an illusion of a lack of self-worth and shame and things of that particular nature. You were immaculately conceived by a divine and perfect idea, uh, as a divine and perfect idea straight from the living one. So you are resetting yourself back to the original source of all creation, which is the presence that is never an absence. You are flawless. 
You see, I'm talking about your original self before there was imprints. So you've entered into this holy state. And I don't, when I say holy, I'm not talking about religiosity. I'm talking about W-H-O-L-L-Y. Holy, holy. The holy presence, you see. You enter into to this state uh, of a prayerful, uh, meditative, uh, vision-pulled spiritual community to feel your way back to your flawless nature, you see. That's called an insight. That's called a revelation. That's called a healing. That's called a reset. So that you can walk on this planet and absolutely be in the world as it appears to be, but be of the source of all creation, to be of the presence of love and beauty and intelligence, to be of abundance, to be of joy, you see. And so this is a great reset. There's a divine and perfect whole mind of which our minds is an individualized expression of the divine mind. So we, we are resetting so that our mind is becoming an avenue of awareness of that which is real rather than the misuse of the law that allows for our mind to be caught up with uh, the virus of fear and doubt and worry that produces experience of such. So that ultimately there is a reset of our heart space that may be full to overflowing with turmoil and woundedness and a constant regurgitation of our perception of what may have happened in the past so that ultimately our, our mind has, uh, our heart and our mind has a reset so the mind is an overflowing vehicle of divine love and you learn then and you, you learn to become aware that you are thinking with your heart and you're feeling with your mind and so that the mind and the heart become one dynamic spiritual organ playing the music of the infinite. All of this is via spiritual practice. It's via affirmative activated prayer. It's via meditation, uh, 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 life visioning, sacred service, generosity of the heart so that you can hear the topic which is saying in substance you are flawless. Be not lawless. That there is a universal law that matches your frequency, matches your vibration, matches your predominant thought. Every thought you have produces a chemical, a protein. And those chemicals and proteins uh, produce experience ultimately. So though you are flawless, be not lawless, be on the right side of the law. Consciously until it becomes a subjective tendency in your life so that even when you're not consciously thinking, your subconscious awareness of what you have surrendered to is thinking through you and as you. Remember, if you're not consciously thinking for yourself, something is thinking for you. And it is generally the world of appearances, effects, and the external uh, forces uh, uh, trying, to trying to garner your attention and think for you. I remember during the great uh, lockdown, there were, there were silly individuals saying, don't do any research for yourself. We've done it all for you. We're trying to dumb you down so that you can have the experience we want you to have. Fear, doubt, worry. But we say, oh, no. We go directly to the source of all creation, tap into divine intelligence and unconditional love, and we research it until we hear, search me, O oh Lord, mm, mm, mm. and see if there's any way within me that's not on the path of unfoldment. For that which is within me is the presence. You knew me before I was born. Everything about me, all of my potential, I live for you, which is the you in me as me. This is to come into the right use of the law. Be not flawless. I mean, be flawless. Be not lawless. Just checking to see if you're listening. <laughs> you laughed at the right moment, so you were listening. <laughs> so, 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 so as we're stepping into this Awareness that there's a universal law that matches our intention, matches our thought, or matches our frequency, whether it's conscious or unconscious. We begin with an awareness always, it's always, whether it's the beginning of the year or as Dion reminded us, day by day by day by day, we enter into a vibrational state of being willing to be more than we've ever thought we could possibly be. 
That becomes the intention that we set when we wake up in the morning. We become willing to go beyond the present known within us of which we've developed all manner of strategies to survive in our known reality of which outside of the known there is a vast infinite horizon of more good that we've never experienced. We don't even know it exists yet. And so we have to live in the dynamic of willingness. And as I see my Arrhythmia family here who was with me, I had an opportunity to speak a little bit about the fact that we must be willing without an understanding of how and why. Oftentimes, there is a delayed tactic by the ego, the egoic structure, that wants you to understand something before you're willing to surrender. Wants you to, wants you to understand or know why or how it is to happen before you have a, a willingness not so in mature spiritual circles. You become so keenly aware that there is a presence and not an absence that is everywhere in its fullness, that is changeless, that never compromises its own nature. It is always being more and more and more of itself and wants to know itself as each and every one of us. That somewhere along the line, we activate a consciousness of willingness. I will the will of God to be done in my life. The will of love, the will of peace, the will of joy, the will of harmony, the will of abundance, the will of prosperity, the will of health, wholeness, woo, and bliss and ecstasy. I become so willing without an understanding of how and why that the willingness itself opens the door to great possibilities. And then later on, when insight occurs, there's language that happens that matches the new understanding that has come through our willingness. Don't wait. Wake up in the morning and say, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm willing for more good to show up in my life. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I'm willing for more love and more peace and more harmony and more abundance to show up in my life. I don't know why. I don't know when. I don't know who is going to come through. But I stand in the frequency of willingness. Without to have any understanding as to how this is going to happen. Why this is going to happen. Just willingness itself. That is... To be not lawless. That's to be on the right side of the law. To delay yourself is to misalign yourself with the law and say, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till I understand all of this before I practice. I'm going to wait until I really deeply, deeply, deeply believe it until I practice. No, don't, put, don't live life on the layaway plan. <laughs> Saving life today to live it tomorrow. No, in the nowness of this moment, step into the awareness. I am willing. You have heard me say over the years, where there is willingness, there is a way. When there is willfulness, there is a wall, a vibrational wall. I'm going to just, I'm gonna, through my willfulness, I am just going to try to make something happen. I'm going to change other people. I'm going to change the external circumstance. I'm going to change all of these things, and then one day I'm going to be happy. No, 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 no. To be on the right side of the law, you wake up. And when I say wake up, I'm, I'm not just speaking about, and I'm including when you wake up in the morning, when you're first coming conscious. But throughout the course of the day, you just stop and have a wake-up call with yourself. I'm willing. I, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world of phenomena. But in this moment, I am willing to be more than I ever thought I could be. I'm willing to embrace more joy, more harmony, more abundance, more prosperity, more intelligence, availability to more guidance coming in a language in a way that I can understand. I'm willing. Let this willingness be the way. Let this willingness open up ways that I can't see right now. I am, as I said this morning, changing my vibrational address. My zip code is shifted. My address is shifted. My, my vibrational address, address is more good than I can imagine. Join me there. Come with me there. Right use of the law. Be not lawless. Be not lawless, you see. And then we step into a field 
of a greater, avail a greater availability and the willingness to ask for help. This does not make us victims as long as we know what we're asking help from. In other words, the right use of the law is, and I, I coined the phrase many years ago after I had had a near-death experience there in Costa Rica, almost drowning in the ocean, <laughs> of help. I came out of that wave and said, I need some help here. But the word help became, hello, eternal loving presence. That's what help is. But here's the deal. Here's where the misuse of the law occurs. People may be going through a dire circumstance or whatever it is. It could be a physical thing, it could be a mental thing, an emotional thing, a relationship thing, a fine, whatever it is. And they'll inextricably ask for help, but their mind will go through a, to a person. I want this person to help me. I want this circumstance to change so that I can be helped. No, that's, that's, that's lawless. You ask for help, but you open yourself up to the presence as the source of all good. I'm asking for help, not from a person, but from the presence. Now the presence may operate through a person. The presence may show up through a friend of yours. The presence may show up as a sudden shift in, in, a, in a circumstance or a situation, but you're on the right side of the law because you went right to God first. Are you following what I'm saying? So, 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 so we've been trained to look for something in the physical to help us. If I could just take this thing, if I, this person would just do this for me, you see, I'll be okay. No, 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 no. You're putting the cart before the heart. You see, no, 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 no. The right use. You're going through something. I need some help here. But your attention, your attention is unto the hills. That's higher consciousness from which cometh your help. You're expanding your awareness. I know that my Redeemer, which is the presence of God within me, liveth. I know the presence of God is closer than my hands and feet. It's within me. I'm asking for help. That means I'm being available to the, to the presence of life to shine through me. And it may move somebody. You may be guided to move. You may be guided to ask somebody. You may be guided to go to a certain circumstance or situation. But you went to God first. Not lawless. To go outside into the realm of phenomena first is to be lawless. Now you have condensed uh, your asking to something that's limited rather than to something that's unlimited. God is unlimited good. God is the source. And when I say God for the newcomers, I'm not talk talking about a man in the sky. I'm not talking about religiosity. I'm talking about life, presence, Intelligence, love, beauty, that is real. It is forever, you see. It is forever. It is forever. It is forever. So the right use is, I'm going to the presence within me directly. Now what do I do? I'm feeling. I'm feeling. I'm feeling the love and the support. I'm feeling the abundance. I'm feeling that right action is occurring, you see. Right action is occurring. You see, so many people are miserable because they're living a life that's not even existing except in their own mind. They're living a life in their deluded imagination about worst case scenarios that hasn't happened. But they're miserable in the chemicals of that deluded imagination. And it hasn't even happened. And they're doing that every day. And creating a self-made prison of the mental conundrum of separation. It's a conundrum of which this Cohen that I've spoken about before speaks to. And Guru says to his disciples, imagine that a goose is stuck in a bottle. You have to get the goose out of the bottle. 
You can't break the bottle. You can't bang the bottle on the back of it and force the goose out. How do you get the goose out? The students go into meditation to avail become available to answer to this koan, which is a sacred riddle that expands your consciousness. And they start to say, well, you can suck it out, or you know, you, you can coax it out with food, whatever. Ultimately, the answer was in the first word. Imagine that the goose is in the bottle. How do you get it out? There's no goose in the bottle. The imagination is that the goose is in the bottle. We have misused our imagination that has condensed itself into experience. You've imagined that you're poor. You've imagined that you're unloved. You've imagined that you're not taken care of. You have imagined, and I'm not saying it's your fault. I mean, remember we talked about the imprints at the beginning of this particular talk? We've been imprinted. But the imprint has created a misuse of our imagination. So we are imagining and reimagining over and over again, worst case scenarios, being unloved, being unworthy, being unsupported, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until the imagination is the goose in the bottle and we've experiencing all of that. And then we try to ask for help, but we go to all the wrong places. We are re-enchanting our imagination until the imagination becomes a vehicle to, the trend, to that which transcends the imagination beyond the imaginal realm the unknown that which we cannot see or hear yet is real that then becomes the very vibration of our life and our being. And then in the spirit, the right use of the imagined nation and not being lawless, in the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose holiday we're celebrating this weekend, who evoked a great dream in our global society, a great vision, of a beloved community, a world that works for the highest and best within us all, a world where dynamic peace and a sense of oneness and harmony reign supreme on the planet, <clears throat> we become aware, and this happens as we mature spiritually. When we are immature and live under the shadow of separation, we see differences as opposition to us. As we mature and expand our awareness, we see differences as the many ways that the presence, which is infinite, reveals itself as a variety of expressions of flowers in the garden. You can always tell individuals under the shadow of an immature consciousness because they'll say, those people, those people born over there, those people in that country, those people that emanated and experienced that religion or speaks that language or that color of their skin or that sexual orientation and they see themselves separate from those people, that's a sign of spiritual, emotional, and mental immaturity. For once you wake up to your glorious nature, you see differences, not as opposition, but you see differences as the play of divinity upon itself to reveal its infinite nature and to know itself according to the infinite patterns that spring into expression as a multitude of snowflakes that are all different, of, of leaves on a tree that are different, flowers that are different, petals on those flowers that are different, sentient beings uh, that are unique, all expressions of the infinite I am presence that's cascading everywhere. You see? Wrong use of the law, difference means opposition. And you see this among governments and nations all the time. They'll always, you know, de 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 you know uh, bastardize or, or, or demonize the other. 
Just turn on your news and you'll see somebody new to hate today. And your government is sponsoring it, sponsored by your government and all the pharmaceutical companies in the world. <laughs> These are your people to hate today. This is the country to hate today. These are the people to hate today, sponsored by all of the corporate Don't you buy it. The lines that are forcefully drawn in the earth are drawn by men. to control your mind and destiny. When you expand your awareness and go into the timeless dimension of ultimate reality, you see yourself at one with the cosmos, the multidimensional universe, galaxy, your solar system, your planet that you emerged from as an earthling. You see all beings as emanations of the light that you are. No more opposition, but a splendid expression of unity without repeating itself. Mm. Just think about that. Just think about this for a moment. What if every single being was exactly alike? Boring! <laughs> Ooh, talk about trauma. Everyone, if, eh, there would be no need for anyone else if everyone is exactly the same. Everyone is needed. Everyone is significant. Everyone matters because everyone carries a unique facet of the individualized expression of the all good. So when you wake up to the awareness of a deep sense of willingness to be more than you ever thought you can be without understanding how or why. When you open yourself up to a deep and profound availability that every single day you can say, I need some help here. But you are having a communion with the presence first before you lower your vision to a person to help you you, you look unto expanded awareness first. My help cometh from my expanded awareness. My good might come through someone, but it's coming directly from God. I'm not being lawless. And as I mature, I begin to see all beings as an expression of the divine light, even individuals that have denied their own light and may be engaged in destructive behavior or conversation, doesn't mean you got to go to dinner with them. <laughs> doesn't mean you got to go to lunch or breakfast. But it does mean that you're not going to sully your consciousness with hate. You're not going to sully your consciousness with resentment, animosity, no. As Yeshua ben Joseph said, forgive, for they know not what they do. We could add, forgive, because they don't know who they are. Okay. Therefore, they don't know what they do. And so you stand as a great lighthouse, a vibrational reckoning, so that everyone then comes into your awareness, your thought pattern, your energetic field, gets a jolt of awakening. They don't know what they're feeling, but they feel a wave of possibility that plants a seed of awakening of which you might not be around to see. I remember when I used to teach at, as a faculty member at the School of Ministry at that particular time under the aegis of the United Church of Religious Science. And I can remember I, used to, I taught mysticism, I taught affirmative prayer, I taught a lot of things there. It was, Wonderful. And I remember one of the teachers came up to me and she said, Michael, how can you do it? I said, do what? She said, you know, I go in to teach these students and, and, and I don't think they're getting what I'm teaching. I'm getting frustrated because I don't see the, I don't see their unfoldment. And I said, listen, listen, you have to see this as planting seeds. You're not going to see every seed grow in front of you. But you have to teach 
from the depth of your being and you have to plant these seeds that might sprout five years from now. They may grow through something and then suddenly what you have planted may come into their heart and mind and they may express it, but you can't get frustrated because suddenly they're not a mystic in your consciousness right now, particularly if you're not seeing from mystic consciousness. So the lesson for all of us, sometimes we're seed planting. So we have to make sure that the feeling tone that's emanating from us is coming from our connection with the presence and we may not see a person shift or change around us at that particular time. Does a farmer not plant simply because every seed may not come to fruition? Does not plant a tree even though that tree will bear fruit well after the farmer has made their transition? What do farmers do? They plant anyway. They plant, knowing at some time when the conditions are right, the seed will emerge. And so we live life with an infinite patience. Infinite patience brings about immediate manifestation in our life because there are no hindrances or restrictions or resistance to the flow which is eternal, which is here, which is now. You are flawless. Be not lawless. Be on the right side of the law. Stand in your flawless nature. And then add this in terms of being on the right side of the law. Do not wait to be in joy until manifestation occurs. In other words, don't reserve your joy until the manifestation happens. That's lawless. You practice being in celebration and in joy and in love and carrying the feeling tone of abundance before manifestation occurs. Don't wait. Again, when you wake up throughout the course of the day, you wake up in the morning, at that moment, oh, I feel the joy of my heartbeat. I feel the joy of an unpainted tapestry called this day that will bring about the possibility of more good. I'm feeling it. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know who's going to come through. I don't know how it's going to happen. That's not my job. <laughs> I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to hesitate. The Spirit of God is never late. It's happening right now. Don't wait. Don't wait to reserve your joy for the future when something happens. That's lawless. Be the right side of the law. Ooh, I'm grateful. What are you grateful for? I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm just grateful. I'm just thankful. I don't know. I'm crazy. I don't know why I'm happy. I don't know why I'm in joy right now. I can list you 10 reasons why I should not be in joy. But all I need is one reason to be in joy. My vibrational frequency will change. My address will change. My condition will change. And the spirit of the living one will flow through me because I'm available and open. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. God is never late. Be available. All of this is spiritual practice. You only know what you practice. You only know what you practice. Everything else is conjecture and hypothesis and theories. Academia at best. But when you practice being on the right side of the law, Insight happens. Whew. I'm changed. Something new in my is my life. I'm changed. Forever changed. 
Forget being forever 21. <laughs> forever transformed by the renewing of my mind, not being conformed to the world. I'm changed. I'm available. I'm open. I'm receptive. I'm lawful. Not governmental laws. I'm lawful. The Christ is the government upon whose shoulders I'm standing upon. The Christ consciousness. The Buddha field. The love awareness. Mm. Mm, mm. I'm telling you, it's an acquired taste, but after a while it tastes so good. Ooh. Think about your own taste palate, and I'm going to stop in just a second. When you were young, you may have wanted to eat a whole lot of sugar, but as your palate matured, you wanted some good food fruit and vegetables. It's like, ooh, ooh, papaya. Ooh, pineapple. Oh my God. Persimmon. Broccoli. Collard greens. Mm, mm, I'm getting hungry. And you didn't want all of that prefabricated sugar in your body. You want it the real deal. It's an acquired taste. But, but ultimately, it's like, whoo, whoo, orgasmic, mm, blissful. Spiritual growth development unfoldment may start off as a little bitter because you got to change. But ultimately, you live on the verge of transformation. And it's blissful and it's magnificent. You are flawless. Be not lawless. Use the law until the law uses you. Until it becomes so subjective that even in a moment you think not, the spirit of the living God answers. And even while you are yet praying and asking, answers are already flowing. That is the life that I am confirming upon you right now. That is the life we're activating right now. We turn within where it all begins. We turn away from the external world of effects, circumstances, situations, people, places, things, circumstances, world of effects. <laughs> we turn within. Our interiority is becoming clean and pristine. We're becoming aware that we are awareness itself. And all that is passing through our awareness, every conjecture, every belief, every opinion, every point of view, or the transit transitory condensation of thoughts and thinkingness and thought forms, we are not fooled by it. We open ourselves up and with a great rush of gratitude. We allow all that is passing through. We hear, this too must pass. It passes through. And what's left? Us, flawless, us, unfolding perfection, us, wholeness, well-being, oh, the debris is being cleansed away, oh, Mother, Father, God, infinite spirit, Lord, God, almighty. Divine Living One, Life Itself. How great Thou art! How infinite! How infinite! How infinite is Thy presence! Close 
closer than my very neck vein as the Quran would indicate closer than my breathing hands and feet closer than that as the scripture of the Bible would say we become grateful we don't wait we enter into gratitude right now. We don't wait for anything. We become grateful right now. We don't, we don't wait for anything. We become grateful right now and we begin to recognize the presence. Oh my God, it's wordless everywhere. Oh, we feel it. One with God. We're one, unified. We're one with God. We're oneing, we're oneing, we're oneing. One with God, one with God, one with God. One with God, one with God. And from this consciousness of oneness, I have the privilege and the honor to speak the word for us right now, not just words. Oh, but the vibrational frequency of surrender and willingness that the words are carrying for each and every one of us, knowing there's only one of us here, let us be free. Liberated right now. Let us rise up with a greater readiness of a light and a luminosity. Oh, call it health of the body temple. Mental body, emotional body, physical body, financial body, body of our affairs, all of our relations shot through with the light of the eternal. Let there be light and love and well-being oh let it let it let it let it let it happen anything that would hinder delay or, or obstruct this or deny this oh it's nothing it's nothing it's nothing it doesn't have any power here because it's only one power we believe heal our unbelief any part within us that that cannot even believe that we're worthy oh we eradicate those thoughts now say out loud I am worthy for more good than I've ever imagined I'm available to more joy than I've ever experienced all of my needs are met I don't need to know how but all of my needs are met right now I feel prosperous. I feel whole. I feel wealthy. Don't be afraid of this word. I'm not talking materialism here. I'm talking about the abundance of the universe wanting a place to express itself. Say, I feel wealthy. I feel healthy. Right now. It is in, con it is in this consciousness of absolute truth and the vibrational frequency of the all that is that we mm, 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 that we mm, bask in the awareness of thanksgiving right now just just bask in this feeling tone for just a moment give them a little bask music bask
everything I need. Mm -hmm. I say thank you, thank you, thank you. I say thank you, thank you, Lord. I say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Holy breath, feel it. Let the message wash through you. And this, in this expanded consciousness, we hold in this prayerful field.